Thank you very much, Mr. Registrar, for your welcoming remarks and also for introducing me very generously. I will not go through the list of people you acknowledged. Uh, you have done that very well uh, already. Maybe I should just acknowledge the, the parents, uh, the guardians, uh, relatives of our new students and perhaps some of our senior students. This is a very important day for yourselves as families and for your children, for your loved ones that we are going to leave behind here. I should also acknowledge uh, the academic core. As you can see, so many of them took away their family time to be with you here. Just like we have introduced members of council, uh, members of management, and other guests who are here, we wish we could introduce each one of them individually. Because really, what you have come here to do has so much to do with what they could offer to you. So they are an, a very important element of our system as a university. I should also uh, acknowledge the Registrar, acknowledged the presence of the members of Council. Uh, governance of this institution uh, depends on how creative, how innovative members of Council are. Without their support, we could have all the vision as management, we could have all the plans, but they will always be frustrated without their support. I should also acknowledge two or three other people amongst many others who are here from business and industry, uh, from other organs of civil society, from government, uh, local, provincial especially. There is a reason why uh, the MEC for, for Treasury, uh, MEC Mohai, and the MEC for Education, MEC Mahwe. Uh, I also see we've got the HOD for Agriculture, Dr. Morosi. Thank you very much for being with us. But I think your coming here, especially MEC uh, Mahwe and Mohai may have to do with the fact that the province of the Free State is very serious about supporting education, about supporting not just basic education but tertiary education. Remember, the province does not have a mandate to support tertiary education. That's a national mandate uh, of the Department of Higher Education and Training. But I believe because the current provincial government of the Free State, in particular the MECs that I'm referring to, have such a passion for education, they've been able to make millions and millions, I'm not even going to count, but it's really many millions. It's not just 10, it's not just 20, it's much more than that, that they make available for a number of the young people who are seated here and those who are not here to pursue their tertiary education. And I'd like us to give them a round of applause and I'll tell you why especially we need that. I think they deserve a, uh, this round of applause because, I, as the Registrar said, I used to work in Johannesburg. 
in Gauteng. As most of you will know, Gauteng is probably the richest province in this country. My then Vice Chancellor, Professor Lois Onongwa, and myself, we went to the provincial government of Gauteng. That was in the early 2000s. And why did we do so? We wanted to convince them that education is very important and therefore the Gauteng province ought to make available some money to support Gauteng's young people to pursue university education. We never got much from the richest province of this country. We also went to the Eastern Cape, we went to KwaZulu-Natal and so on. We didn't get much. But here in the Free State, a province that is by no means one of the richest, we are able to say today there is a lot more support to the young people of this province. Now, I'm not talking ANC because they happen to be members of the ANC. I'm, I'm simply talking facts. We are gathered here today as the CUT family and stakeholders, students, parents, guardians, sponsors of our students, leaders of business, leaders of government, professors and other staff, to witness the official opening of Central University of Technology, Free State. This is an important occasion as we publicly recommit ourselves to the honorable task of educating and training the young minds in our midst and the next generation of leaders. As you may have gathered even from our president, Mr. Busako. I wish to address a special word of welcome to you, our students, and everybody else from your families. We celebrate with you today your entry into tertiary education. And for those of you who have already been with us for at least a year, we celebrate your recommitment to the importance of tertiary education. We are here to assist you in this learning process and we wish to see you flourish here at CUT. May you go from strength to strength and accomplish all that you have set your mind to. It will require determination, self-discipline, hard work, and a lot of diligence. It is indeed one of the most important steps that anyone could take in setting themselves up to succeed in life henceforth. Remember, knowledge is power, and you are empowering yourselves through your studies to become the best you can be. We embrace you as part of our family. As the Registrar said, we are in local parentis to yourselves, and we have a leadership charter at this university that really implores all our staff seated here and some of our staff who are not with us to as much as possible treat you with great care, with great compassion. There is an article that came out a day or two ago that says universities don't care a damn about young people. That should not be the case at any university and less so here at CUT. So, should you feel as the new students or even senior students that you are not being treated with respect, with compassion, let me know. But I have all the confidence in our staff and students that the majority of them will do this very well. You will have opportunities here to develop, not only intellectually, but socially as well. As the Registrar and the SRC President explained, 
There will be lots of support to your intellectual, moral, spiritual, emotional, and physical health. The new building just in front of this hall and the Lapeng Center to the west of that building over there are dedicated to a host of student support services in all the areas I've mentioned. So please familiarize yourselves with the services that are being offered in those buildings and uh, many other buildings within the university. Like many of the staff members seated here behind me, uh, the academics and many in the audience who studied, for example, engineering, hotel and tourism management, graphic design, photography, fine arts, clinical technology or radiography, I'm not mentioning everything, education. You will be a leader, as they are leaders, in the field of your choice. Like Os Durant and Ander Fenter who studied here, some of you will be great rugby players. In fact, we are the current champion of the Varsity Shield Rugby competition amongst four other universities we competed against in 2011. And you know what? CUT is only 30 years old. But the universities we competed, we competed against, UKZN, Vets University, my alma mater and former employer, Fort Hare, my other alma mater, and UWC have a total of over 300 years of existence, of, of life and experience. But an institution with only 30 years of that beat them in this constitution. Like Nikki Boyer, who studied here, some of you will become great cricket players. No doubt, the CU team is the regional champion in cricket. Like Zola Bart, one of the greatest distance runners of our country, you might just get a taxi named after you. The Zola Bart taxi. And that's what CUT can do to you. Like it has done to the ones I've mentioned. There are many others, I will not mention all of them. May I therefore welcome and thank you for joining us on this important occasion. Your contribution as CUT stakeholders is greatly appreciated. Whether you are a direct actor in our daily endeavor of building a first-rate institution, or a member of the wider public that holds us accountable for the public asset, this university, that we manage on your behalf as the citizens of this country, as the taxpayers of this country. Just one last thing to the parents and the new students. Well, one last thing before I really get to my speech. <laughs> you see, the Free State in Bloemfontein is a very calm or provides a very calm environment. It's unlike Houten, a red race that takes place there. But there's one thing you won't find in any university, I think, in the world. CUT is the safest, most secure university you will find. You just go, when you came to this hall, driving by Park Road, there's a police station just outside. So your kids are very safe. We don't have to call the police when there is a, an issue. As you know, human beings always have issues. They just walk in. This side of the campus, beyond President Brown Street, which runs up here, just by, C by the CUT edge or perimeter, there are two church properties there, not just one. 
two church properties, Roman Catholic followed by the Anglican Cathedral. So spiritually, morally, you can even sit in your room, you'll hear the church bells and you'll get into the mood. So spiritually, morally, you are catered for. Going this way, we've got courts. And again, when we need a case to be in court, as I've said, the police are here, the courts are just here, and we can sort that out and find you not guilty. <laughs> Very easily. Well, if you are not. <laughs> But you see, there are those people that we also try to cater for. There are those people who sit around during most of the year when they should be studying, and then a week before the exams, they try to cram all the work. We have the psychiatric hospital just that side. <laughs> So that's why I'm saying we are really very, very safe. We cater for all of these eventualities that uh, may cripple you. As the registrar has said, this is the first month of my second five-year term as vice chancellor and principal. And for the first time in the history of CUT, and I would dare say in the history of South African universities, I'm actually delivering a state of the university address. Before I do so, I should give you an idea of what a principal of a university is about, and I would desk to say what therefore an institution or an organization like ourselves is about. I've, I've chosen principal instead of vice chancellor for a particular reason. It starts with a P, which I'm interested in. There are four things that a principal is responsible for. She must have a plan. You could call it a vision and a strategy. So there must be another plan. A plan. Secondly, she must have excellent people to execute that vision and strategy or to execute that plan. Thirdly, she must have a quality product to sell or to deliver to those interested in it, our academic programs. And that product must translate to something useful in society. Fourthly, she must have pennies and other resources that allow the institution to deliver a quality product, to hire people who can execute the plan. So there are those four Ps for a principal. Plan, people, product, and pennies that she has to bring to the institution, that she has to ensure that the way we use resources is efficient and will not make us uh, do what happens in Limpopo. My address will therefore touch on all of these four fundamental aspects of what a principal should be about and ultimately what a university she leads should be about. I have the honor and, and, and pleasure in this respect to confirm that this university has reached what I may call the tipping point in our determined journey of building a stronger, focused, engaged, and innovative university. I expand on this theme later in my address. Suffice to say, that at CUT presently, we stand at a critical juncture whereby the foundation for becoming a university of technology worthy of leadership 
should firmly be in place. The next step is becoming just that, a stronger, focused, engaged, and innovative public university that imparts practical knowledge and skills which in turn contribute to socioeconomic development and wealth creation in our country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me begin my address by outlining our journey of building a purposeful and innovative University of Technology. When I was honored to become the leader of this institution in 2007, I gave an inaugural address in which I shared some aspects of my vision for CUT. Through a process of engagement with internal and external stakeholders, this vision has, or aspects of the vision I shared, have become a shared and ultimately CUT-owned and community-owned, I would, I would add, product. Some universities enjoy ivory tower positions that masquerade as undisturbed contemplation. Some might tell you that they enjoy that ivory tower because they want disinterested objectivity in the work they do. They might want that distance and ivory tower position because they might say they want to be dispassionately immersed in the work they are doing. Those universities who think that way are universities that do not want to dirty their hands and begin to look like the unwashed or the wretched of the earth, as Franz Fanon wrote. Yet, the fact of the matter is that all universities were created by and for society, and for the society to prosper. In contrast to these elitist notions that I've been referring to above, our overarching idea, therefore, as a university of technology is that it has to be a new generation and counter-trend organization. In other words, when others pursue dispassionate immersion or disinterested objectivity, whatever all those terms are, as a counter-trend new generation university, we have to show or back the trend. New generation is a term describing those organizations, principles, and methods which defy the traditional way of doing things in order to find new horizons for the process of value creation in organizations in particular. It implies that the organization is able to take a quantum leap and effect such major changes as are, as are required to make it a leader in its sector. New generation organizations are recognized for their high degree of innovation, psychological stamina, and levels of creative insight. Related to this concept of new generation is the concept of a counter-trend organization. As I said, we want to be a new generation counter-trend organization. But what does counter-trend mean? Counter-trend describes new generation organizations which are able to perform despite environmental turbulence. That is, they back the trend of inadequate economic performance in the economy. They are typified by their ability to create value despite the many negative factors, including the deteriorating mindset which may surround them. They have a strong belief in their own ability to make things happen. They can overcome the tunnel vision and aversion to risk in order to become can-do organizations. That is what I think CUT 
should be about. Being such a new generation and counter trend organization, CUT, as a university of technology, shall boldly play a direct role in socioeconomic development, which is develop development defined simply and ultimately as lifting millions of our people out of poverty. For us at CUT, what I just described above is what we believe the University of Technology should be about. The rest of what we do should fit within the framework of a new generation and counter-trend university that embeds itself firmly in socioeconomic development. The past four years have provided us at CUT with ample opportunity to painstakingly construct the building blocks for becoming a great university of technology, the highlights of which I now turn to before looking at what lies ahead in turning our vision into reality. Distinguished guests, friends, and colleagues, earlier I referred to the university being at a tipping point. In his book, The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference, Malcolm Gladwell defines a tipping point as the moment of critical mass, the threshold, and the boiling point, and I would add the critical edge or the critical state of existence. I stand before you to validate that we have reached such a critical state of existence at CUT, having done a number of little things, which in our context mean several comprehensive reforms that we believe are key to enabling our university to lead in this sector. Permit me to share the most crucial four of these all-inclusive reforms as well as the anticipated outcomes. These four were intended to do the following. Firstly, to give us a shared purpose as a University of Technology aligned with a new generation counter-trend organization. Secondly, to enable us to build a first-rate A team of leaders, executives, managers, and staff to carry out our vision relentlessly and efficiently. Thirdly, to sharpen our programs and causes and align them to demand and relevance. And fourthly, to prioritize our budgetary resources in accordance with our core business and strategic imperatives so that we could put our resources where our mouths are. So let us look at these, each one of these in more detail. First, a shared purpose as a University of Technology through Vision 2020, that is the plan. Building on the notions of the role of a University of Technology in development I highlighted earlier, we conceived and have begun to implement our shared vision 2020 that has key five principles. The first one, as a technological university, innovation is essential to our vision 2020. We therefore see social and technological innovation to be the focus of our academic skills development and research programs. Therefore, we are not only technological, we also see a role in social innovation. The partnership we have with the provincial government on providing bursaries for you is a social innovation. It's not a technological innovation. So through those strategic partnerships and social partners, we need to create an environment of innovation that will help this institution, that will help students and staff and everybody else to flourish. Secondly, measuring the result of our work is also fundamental to our vision. We at CUT are not about quantity and generalities, but about measurable performance, evidence that supports that performance. We are about outcomes and impact that we would like to see of those, of those outcomes in society. 
and we subject these to systematic and uh, robust monitoring and evaluation. Thirdly, socioeconomic development and entrepreneurship is at the heart of everything we do. CUT's endeavors in knowledge production and human capital development have to be relevant and aligned to the agenda of improving lives in our province, the central region of our country, and in South Africa as a whole. In a nutshell, our vision as an engaged university guides and grounds us into partnering with business, government, and the broader society. Fourthly, our geographical location and our local and regional comparative advantage as a result of our location also matter to us. Our location, even though we are not in one of the most successful, economically successful provinces, but our location should reflect and shape CUT's agenda and priorities because we exist primarily to address the needs of our immediate communities, our province, the broader region of the central region, and the country. Finally, quality and excellence are the glue that holds everything together. CUT has to strive and thrive in providing the best services in education and training, research, innovation, and entrepreneurship development. To assist the Vice Chancellor and the CUT's executives and senior managers as custodians of Vision 2020, a strategy execution unit staffed by a team of five senior policy analysts has been established to strengthen the center of the university as it leads the process of implementing our vision. This recognizes the fact that vision and strategies to achieve it require close attentions, attention in terms of well thought out and planned implementation, regular monitoring, evaluation, and introduction of timely corrective measures. So the comments I've made are about the plan. I'm moving on to the people, building a first-rate core of creative and innovative leadership, management, administration, teachers or lecturers, and researchers, the people. This is a complex po process that requires a critical mass of multi-skilled and innovative minds to lead the process of socio-economic development and wealth creation. I should emphasize here that the term critical mass of multi-skilled and innovative minds is not just applied to mean technology specialists or nerds, but to the entire body of a dynamic and socially astute university. In our case, this includes our teachers or lecturers, the researchers, the leaders of this university, administrators, managers, staff, and students alike. Indeed, as the late Steve Jobs, who built the Apple company, the largest technology company in the world by revenue and profit now lately, fittingly put it, a, and I quote, a properly run company could spawn innovation far more than any single creative individual. He was saying this being a creative individual himself who understood that it's about the whole rather than the individual. And so it should be with a focused, efficient, effective, and an innovative new generation and counter trend University of Technology like CUT. Such a university should attract and retain a critical mass of excellent, creative, and innovative people who produce outcomes that can be felt by all in our society. Like a magnet, it should draw this critical mass of innovative people to its core. It should draw people who are swollen with research and other educational insights and ideas, and who eventually turn those insights and ideas into useful products that help to develop our local and regional economy and ultimately our national economy. 
In the more flourishing cases, this critical mass grows into thousands that now form a reservoir of knowledge and talent that, is, that are put at the disposal of national developmental needs. Let us be clear on this, ladies and gentlemen. It is not difficult to prove that in countries such as the United States of America, there are no successful technology hubs, scientific hubs, industrial hubs, without first-rate and counter-trained universities, especially universities of technology. The cyber city of Boston would be inconceivable without MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In the same sense that Silicon Valley in California is implausible without Caltech, Stanford, and Berkeley. Such universities are magnets that attract innovative and creative minds, especially the young, optimistic, energetic, and I should add, crazy minds. Such people constitute the heart and soul of experimenting with new ideas and commercializing them into startup companies, as well as creating thousands of high-tech employment opportunities. Such crazy minds are of the people who change the world. Some of those crazy minds are here and over there and everywhere else. At Apple's Think Different commercial, which came out in 1997, this is what the commercial said, amongst other things. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. We need these types of people in all spheres and levels of our operations. We need these crazy minds that think they can change the world at council, in our institutional forum, in our Senate, in our SRC, amongst members of executive and senior management in administration, as well as amongst our students. Of course, crazy in a positive way. Crazy in making this place a better place. Crazy in making this region, this province, a better province. Not in destroying it. Such people will constitute our first rate 18 that will drive this university to greater heights. Institutional success obviously depends on this A-team. And let me tell you something about A-team people. They are profoundly affected by a work culture and environment. A poor environment that is not conducive to creativity, innovation, and excellence drives away A-team members. A question may well be asked, how does one learn to innovate and become a high performer and naturally a member of the A-team? Will Rogers says, and I quote, a man, a man or woman only learns in two ways. One by reading and the other by association with smarter people. And indeed, in the words of Colin Powell, and I quote, any time you tolerate mediocrity in others, it increases your own mediocrity. Now, most people read quite a lot here. And as I said earlier, it's the critical mass of smarter, creative, innovative, and crazy people that we need, not the mediocre ones, that will take this university to the next level of leadership in the sector. Our 2011 institutional audit has shown us at CUT what the strengths, weaknesses, and gaps are, and has led to an action plan of how to address these challenges. At executive level, we begin the year with a new Deputy Vice Chancellor for Resources and Operations. 
The exercise of recruiting the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic Affairs and Research continues this year, as is the case with filling all vacancies at managerial and director levels across the institution. For us, therefore, the question of capacity to deliver by attracting and retaining top performers, members of the A team, is of great importance. We fully realize that team building is the most vital imperative and duty for C CUT. We will achieve our vision only with qualitative and productive contribution from everyone in the entire system. So what we need to ponder as members of this community, whether we are in management, whether we are in council, whether we are in the institutional forum, whether we are in the SRC, whether we are just students and staff of the university, is whether we are part of that critical mass of creative, innovative, and crazy people that this institution now requires as it reaches this tipping point. The third element, I said there are four things, the third element is about the product. I've talked about the plan, I've just talked about the people. How about the product? What products are we selling, are we about? Having a vision and an effective A-team for executing it in, in, in turn requires a product. And this is another area in which we have been working hard to achieve greater clarity. Our reform agenda in this regard is the strategic transformation of educational programs and structures, which we call STEPS, which we embarked upon in 2010 and effectively completed at the end of 2011, except for implementation. The process has enabled us to identify our strengths and weaknesses in curricular and educational processes. This exercise permits us to reshape our education and training as follows. One, as a result of steps, we will increasingly, increasingly become known as a university that has evidence of demand for its education and training. CUT qualifications should, in the near term, become vocationally and technologically based, targeting well-defined labor market segments and employers, as opposed to graduates who may swell the ranks of the unemployed. Secondly, thank you. Secondly, and taking from our vision 2020 that necessitated steps in the first place, the exercise has mapped and enabled CUT to grasp how to be more responsive to new and pressing needs in the job market. A large part of steps has been about identifying such opportunities and trends and crystallizing them to CUT's course and program offerings. Thirdly, equally important has been the question of resource implications for the entire CUT's repositioning exercise. Institutional reorganization of this magnitude naturally means aligning our resource envelopes with the tasks our vision compels us to execute, requiring more financial resources and transferring them from one field to another. As we embarked on that reorganization exercise, there will always be casualties, human and otherwise. Fourthly, the outcome of the steps process has has been the nine brand new and demand driven programs we shall introduce in 2013. These nine programs include programs in renewable and sustainable energy. They include a revamped and innovative B Ed program that you've never seen elsewhere. They include a market-oriented art and design program you have never seen anywhere in the country as a result of interactions that we had with the market about 
how you can integrate a number of programs that had since been disparate, different, silos, how they can be integrated in such a manner that because they require design, for example, they require skills of drawing, whether it's fine art, photography requires the understanding of lighting and all sorts of things. And as a result, we have a new program that we are going to introduce that tries to combine all of this to afford our graduates an opportunity to know all these aspects as they go out to work. There are many others. The list is long. As I've said, there are nine programs. I'm simply making examples with these three or four I've mentioned. Fifthly, in addition, we have a number of teaching and learning related initiatives ranging from how work integrated learning will be embedded in every program we offer. How well we will deal with underpreparedness in our system. How we will provide lifelong learning opportunities through continuing education for especially the working people or people who just may not be working but want certain skills in their adult life here in the, in the free state. And people who may never had access to tertiary education. So far, CUT has been an institution that depends largely on young people, the 18-year-olds who enroll. And we are about to change that because there are many other people out there who need tertiary education, who need advancement but are already working or want to change careers at a late stage. We need to provide those opportunities. So clearly, the year 2012 is the year of implementing these initiatives I'm referring to, which are outcomes of the STEPS process. This process should firmly set us on a trajectory of graduating young people into the marketplace on a sound footing, befitting a first-rate new generation and counter-trend University of Technology. Lastly, Prioritizing our budgetary resources in accordance with our core business. This is about the pennies I talked about. This fourth imperative, after the vision, the development of an A-team, the product that the STEPS process was about, I'm pleased to report that CUT is in a healthy financial state. No millions or billions of overdraft here at CUT. We live within our means. Crucially, our efforts of aligning our priorities to budgetary resources have paid significant dividends. We will continue to work in this area for even better results in the coming years. I cite a few examples by way of illustration, all of which have enabled us to put more resources to our strategic priorities besides freeing resources for academic and research pursuits. A few of these, number one, in, addition, in, in 2007, CUT barely engaged in strategic planning, primarily due to the fact that there were no funds to justify the full extent of such an exercise. This was no way to manage a university. Reversing this dire situation became top priority as we started in 2007. And beginning of 2009, we began to allocate resources to strategic planning, which I'm happy to say now stands uh, or stand at approximately 20% of our total revenue. For a university with a budget of about half a billion, 20% of that is a significant amount. This strategic budget allocation permits us to fund projects that support our vision. I always uh, joke around with my former boss at VETS because I remember how I used to struggle to get a hundred thousand to do anything that was of strategic importance. 
And as I've said, we have 20% of our total revenue here to do precisely those things. Prior to 2007, our investment in academe was questionable, to say the least. We aggressively tackled this unacceptable state whereby in 2007, CUT was, for example, spending 51% of its salary budget on support staff, and therefore only 49% on academic staff. We have since reversed this and reduced spending on support staff salaries to 41% down from 51%, which now allows us to take the 49% we had, or we were spending on academic staff, to take it up to 59% of our salary budget. <laughs> Furthermore, between 2009 and 11, we established about 56 new full-time academic posts. For us, this is about 25%, a 25% increase of our academic posts. This was achieved without using CUT's reserves, let alone any overdraft. These posts include six research professorship positions by which we seek to increase capacity and leadership in research and innovation. Understandably, the restructuring process is always complex and challenging. But at least one good outcome that came out of the restructuring process is that it enabled CUT to refocus its resources and to refocus its investment in what is most important in a university, academic affairs. Between 2007 and 2011, CUT's revenue grew by a remarkable 54%. This was not due to student numbers growing sharply during this period or fees that we charge being higher than a number of institutions, not that, but because of careful enrollment planning, realignment of the size and shape of the university and improvements in our graduation rates. Finally, we are scheduled to complete the formulation of our budgeting framework by the first quarter of 2012, where we will do away with financial allocations based on historical patterns in favor of allocations based on priorities and divisional objectives. This will not be easy. We may not achieve it in one year, but we are starting in 2012. This will be the next major milestone of transforming CUT into a more focused and purposeful technology institution. Distinguished guests, CUT family, ladies and gentlemen, in my inaugural address as Vice Chancellor and Principal of CUT on the 25th of May 2007, I noted that our success depended on working together with business and industry government and that we should use our collective intellectual, financial, social, and political might to help the rest of society and its organs to improve the quality of life of our people. That way, CUT will have engaged deeply with the community. Since 2007, we have built a host of strategic partnerships with local and provincial and national government, with business and industry, when I started talking about the MECs, I was actually talking about one of those strategic partnerships that are about improving the quality of life of our people. They are not just feel-good partnerships. They are serious projects that are aligned with these partnerships that are being implemented even as we speak. As should be evident from what I have said, we have been undertaking a series of reforms during the last four years, aimed at building a strong foundation for such a multi-stakeholder collaboration. And as I said at the beginning of this address, we have reached a tipping point of building a great, innovative, new generation and counter-trend university of technology. 
to achieve this goal. I say to CUT internal, internal and, and external stakeholders gathered here today, and those that are not present, that 2012 is the start of dogged implementation that requires our A team to do so. We know what to do with regards to our strategic direction and vision as I presented it. We know where the strengths, weaknesses, and gaps at all levels of our management and administration lie, and we'll work towards steadfastly building an A-team that will take us where we want to go. We know the programs and courses, the, po the products that, are to, that we render to our students, that also make our students more relevant and make our courses more relevant to the demands, more responsive to the demands of our country's market and developmental agenda. We know the priority areas where our financial resources should be targeted for the greatest impact. Let us therefore execute our vision and programs as the CUT community, including our stakeholders, with resolve and fortitude and when we assemble here next year in 2013, our discussion should center on outcomes. Our discussion should center on the impact we are making in the broader society in our region. I thank you very much.